big quarter, but shares down. Um, analysts saying there's no positive catalyst for the stock going forward. What's your reaction to that? Well, I don't think that's correct. And I don't think most analysts are actually saying that. When you look at our business, we've never been more relevant. We posted 46% billings growth in the emerging strategic portions of our company. And people have to know the whole story. You know, five years ago, over 60% of our business started a steady decline. Today, 69% of our business has revenues growing at 25%. And it's in the cloud security category. It's in our professional services that are uniquely differentiated. So I've actually never been more bullish than now on FireEye. The side of our company that's growing faster and is more relevant is now the larger half. So it's just the law of numbers, Emily. We're going to have faster and faster aggregate growth every single quarter. So it was one analyst from Piper Sandler who said the stock lacks a positive catalyst for additional upside. But here are your points mm -hmm. there. And of course, there's certainly the need for the services and software right. that you provide given this spate of massive cyber attacks. It's, it's been right. one after the other. Solar Winds, Microsoft Exchange, right. Excellion, SonicWall, Pulse. Right. What is going on? Have adversaries entered an entirely new era? You know, it's a different year and it's a tough year to be a CISO. For all the folks that make security their living, my hat's off to you. In some ways, Emily, it's showing that our security is getting better because now you have to have implants to break in. You have to have zero days to break in, but we are responding to more zero, zero day based attacks or attacks where there's simply no patch available for them more this year than the last few years combined. And we're not finding them like soon enough. I mean, the bottom line is there's usually a victim or two to the zero day. They've been armed. They've been found by uh, bad actors and we're learning it after the fact. So right now, the best way to describe the internet, it's a hostile neighborhood and you've got to come prepared to fight and defend yourself. <laughs> so as folks move back to the office and we go through another massive workforce transformation, what are the biggest threats you see on the horizon given that uh, so many different actors out there and state actors as well are more brazen than ever. Right. Well, I do believe if you watch geopolitics, hacks follow where money goes, hacks follow geopolitical conditions. And right now with the new administration, there could be nations making different political squeezes. Diplomacy might be an option over time. I don't think much will change on the threat horizon right now, whether you're in the office or out of the office, the attackers are 10,000 miles away. They don't know where the heck you're at. They're still gonna attack. Uh, you can monetize ransomware in safe harbors like Russia, in North Korea, in Iran. And, and because of that, with no risks or repercussions, there will always be ransomware actors, extortionists using the internet. And then again, based on geopolitical conditions, we're gonna see modern nations developing offensive capabilities and exercising those capabilities uh, without rules of engagement that are clearly defined. I'm curious if we're, we're getting any closer on attribution. Microsoft attributed the exchange hack to a group called Hafnium, which no mm -hmm. one had ever heard of before March. Do you know what Hafnium is? And, and you know, who has the most credible intelligence to be attributing these attacks? Well, I think a lot, it depends on the types of attacks. There are times where Cisco has great intelligence. Microsoft always has great intelligence. Amazon Web Services has, has great intelligence. We maintain over 200 threat analysts that speak 34 languages and over 25 nations as just our intelligence collections arm. And that's the tough thing about cyberspace. You can see the planes if they're attacking in the air. You can see the army on land. You can see the ships in the sea. But in the cyber domain, everything's invisible. And without the, you know, with that invisibility cloak, you're having a tough time. It's kind of like a gray area domain and people are uh, hiding their true identities and true origins, but I have no reason to think Microsoft has it wrong. I think Hafnium is, is a Chinese threat actor. Meantime, the Chinese government has repeatedly denied allegations it was involved. And I'm curious, does the Chinese government have any credibility here? on this issue or is there some some nuance that that we're not getting you know i can't tell as to the truthfulness of different nations and their diplomats i just know that right now the evidence that we see in regards to the exchange attacks they're most consistent with a chinese threat actor and you know i have every reason to believe microsoft got that attribution right 
Meantime, the time it takes you to identify a hack has massively condensed from something like over a year it took 10 years right. ago to just 24 days, which I, I know yeah. that's, that's good, but also bad. What does that tell you? Well, Quickly. ransomware is shortening it. And what you're talking about is what we call dwell time. From the moment a company is compromised to the moment they know it. I mean, if you know it right away, you can respond right away and usually diminish the impact and consequence of the breach. 24 days, it, it's being, we almost had to divide the types of investigations. We did over a thousand investigations in the time frame that we reported on, but ransomware and extortion, you get the alarm bell. You either have encrypted drives or you get right. the ransom. You get the extortion, and that's shortening that time frame. That being said, I, I think as an industry, everybody is detecting attacks faster and remediating faster okay. today than 10 years ago.